things, right? So you, you, if it's zero, you say the distance is still zero. If, it, if, you take it, if it's anything else, take it to the power of zero, it's one, right? So, so then what this is, is going to be a sum over i equals one to the d of um, um, one if a i not equal to b i and zero if a i equal to b i. So, so it's just counting, it's counting the number of, um, it's, it's counting the number of elements which are different. Um, so, 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 so if you're applying this on here, how's this going to look in this picture? I don't have green today, so I run out of colors. But um, okay, so if I have th this point here, is this is this the distance one or less? Yeah. yeah. So th this is the distance one. Also distance one. All the corners are still distance one, right? If I'm if if I'm um, let's say if I'm right here on the L two ball. The distance is two, right? It's different in the x and the y coordinate right here, right? So th this is outside the outside the ball. This is outside the unit ball and the L one distance. How about if I move into here? It's still outside, right? It's still different in the x and the y coordinate. So how far do I have to move in before it's it's, uh, it's inside. To go all the way down until I hit the origin. So it's this really weird distance where it's kind of, here. it's basically runs right along these axes. So this is, it's pretty weird. Um, so this is, like the L zero distance. So I don't know. This picture doesn't make as much sense with the L zero, but it, it gives you it gives you a sense of what you would do if you did something like the L one half distance. The L one half is going to look like this. So this may be the L one half distance, which I could also define if I wanted to, but. This isn't anything anyone ever uses, at least not really that I know about. Um, it's, it starts caving in here, you know, towards this L0 distance. This is kind of what happens in the world. Um, and so, in, in some sense, it's a, well, what happens is that it's no longer um, convex, right? The shape is no longer convex. If I go, um, so, so, so everyone knows what it means to be um, convex. Yeah. So who's not heard the who's not heard the term um, convex? Right. Okay. So, so you can see it's not convex here, and this makes it hard to work with sometimes. Anything less than the L one distance, um, because if you're trying to if you're trying to optimize this function, you're trying to optimize an L one distance. You can think of searching for a local minimum or something. Well, if it's not, it may not have a have. It may have lots of local minimum which are not um, global minimum because it's not convex. So this can be hard to work with. Anything less than L1 is not going to be convex. So there'll be algorithms we talk about later where we really want something which is like the L0 distance. We want to count the number of times something is different. Um, but we can't really optimize the L0 distance the same way we can the other distances like L2. And so people have been doing L2 for a long time. It turns out it's easy to work with because there's these properties where the, 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 uh, the point that minimizes the distance to a bunch of points is the average of them. So this property comes up all over the place. But the L1 distance, people have realized, is the closest you can get to the L0 with, um, and still be uh, convex and still is easy to work with. Um, okay, so when we talk about um, regression, we'll, we'll come back to this picture. So, so kind of keep
keep this in mind, but it's a lot to see all at once, so we'll have a little bit of, of, a, of a preview now. Um, okay. Um, and so, I, so, so other than this picture and these different definitions, you know, I, I hope this drives home the point that you could change the p and the lp norm by by a little bit, and uh, and, and you'd still have um, you'd still have a valid distance. It's still a metric. It still satisfies all these properties, um, but the distance is slightly different, right? So, you know, don't take too much faith in the, in the, in the exactness of your distance. Oh yeah, I didn't talk about um, the LSH um, for this distance. So, I, um, so for the L0, this should look like what we're using for the uh, 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 um, for the min hash, right? So for the min hash, we basically wanted to count the fraction of things at which were exactly the same. And so you can use something like the min hash to do the L0 distance in certain cases, right? If it looks like the Jacquard distance, you can do something like the min hash to get the L0 one. Um, but it's, it's not all L0 distances, it's, it's something slightly different. You can do something like these p-stable distributions. Notice though that this was an open interval at 0. Um, which it basically means that the p-stable dist distributions don't work for here, but you can do something like a 0.0001 dist stable distribution. And it'll kind of work for L0 distance, but it doesn't work very well in practice. So, but there's some theory that says you can do something like LSH in LSH for L0 distance. But again, it doesn't quite work. But something like the L, L1 half distance works still works pretty well. But as you get closer to zero, it works worse and worse. And, worse. and you kind of expect it not to work well if you thought about it geometrically because it's hard to kind of get something that's the right shape because uh, the shape has no area to it. Um, okay, so, so let me mention a couple of other distances. Um, we mentioned the Jacquard um, distance, um, where this is, we say, between A and B is equal to 1 minus the Jacquard similarity between A and B, where A and B are sets. Um, and so, um, um, if you look at this, so let's look at to see if it satisfies all of these these properties. Um, so it is maybe I'll write this out one more time. It's the intersection between A and B over the union of A and B. Right. So if you have two, one way of thinking about this, if you have two sets A and B. And so you can look at the union, which is all the area, and this is the intersection part. So this is the um, Jacquard similarity, is the fraction of the union, which is inside here. Then the Jacquard distance, if you A and B, is 1 minus this, so it's going to be the fraction of the area in here, and this is called the, um, the symmetric uh, difference, and this is written as a triangle B. So, so then the Jacquard distance between A and B is equal to A triangle B over um, A union A Okay, so now if you look at this picture, 
it should be pretty easy to see that it's this has to be greater or equal than zero because um, you can't have some negative amount of of mass here. Um, it's, it satisfies the identity property because the, the symmetric difference between two sets is only zero if they are exactly the same. Even if one is contained in the other, the symmetric difference is still something. Right? So it satisfies the identity. The, the symmetry satisfies. There's no ordering in the way I did things here. Um, and then the triangle inequality. Um, well, the triangle inequality is a little bit trickier to prove. Um, and that's, if you've looked at the homework, that's basically what you need to do for the bonus part of the homework. Um, see if you can prove that the triangle inequality holds. Um, but it does hold, so. Um, okay, that was a hint. For that. <laughs> it's also in the notes, so it's not too much of a hint. But, and only for those paying attention. Okay, so. Um, so, so the Chicard distance between sets, you know, it satisfies these, these metric properties. It's, 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 it's one of the things we want to anticipate. Okay, so what are some of these other sorts of not quite metrics? Um, so let's see, I'm going to talk about now, now a particular pseudo metric, which is just interesting. Um, um, so this is the cosine um, distance. So this is um, this is distance cosine, and this was again going to be between two vectors, a and b, um, where a, b are going to be in r, r, b. And this is going to be equal to um, the, um, the dot product between A and B over the norm of A times the norm of B. Okay. Just looking at this, it's like maybe a little bit confusing. It's not clear what this means, right? So, so let's draw a picture here. So I'm going to have two points, A and B. And it's going to be useful to have to keep track of the origin as well. And so then the, the cosine distance is basically I look at the angle between these two, these two vectors from the origin to these two points. And then the cosine distance is going to be the cosine of the angle between A and B. <clears throat> so there's this cool thing that, so I guess there's, there's no one in here was from um, graphics, right? There's someone here in works with graphics or stuff like that. There's this cool thing I learned when I was taking a graphics class in college that when you think of the dot product between two vectors, really think of the cosine. And, and actually, if you take the cross product, you should be thinking of the sine. Um, but it's, it's because this property holds here. So the, the dot product is like the cosine, and the cross product is like the sine, and a similar property holds. I won't write it because I'll probably mess up the scaling or something. But, um, but th this, if you want to calculate the dot product between two vectors, um, or if you want to calculate the angle between them, you really want to take the take the, um, the angle is identified with the cosine, right? So there's this property that the angle between A and B is going to be the arc cosine of A dot B, the norm of A times the norm of B. Right, so this this says the same thing as here. The arc cosine is the inverse of the cosine, right? So this is a cool property. If you ever want the angle between two vectors, what you do is you make them, so I had this norm problem here too, right? So that meant that I took, I made them so that they were at an L2 distance of one, 
So this is B normalized, and this is A normalized. Right? right? So if I drew this L2 ball around here, it would I've I've divided the the vectors by their norm so that their length is now exactly one. And so then what the dot product is doing, remember this dot product is, is, is the same thing as a projection. So if I look at, you know, I'll draw these, these over again a little bit bigger, and it's con convenient if you draw B so that it's parallel, then if you take the, the dot product of A and B, or of A, A bar and B bar, really it's the length of this vector of A projected onto B. That's exactly what the dot product is written. So remember, the dot product of A and B is equal to AI times uh, BI, right? So if B is, is along the x-axis, this x value is 1 and y value is 0, then the only coordinate that survives is the, is the x coordinate. And it's just the x coordinate of A. But if B was rotated in some other way, it works the same way. It's just under a rotation. All right, so I'm still looking at the, the effect of A in the direction of B. That's what the dot product is talking about. <coughs> and then the, the, this property holds. Um, why is it hold? Um, it holds because it's one of those laws you're supposed to learn in geometry. Um, I guess there's something like you take the angle here, and there's uh, uh, um, Sokatoa, right? So, so who learned Sokatoa? Okay, so who's never heard of this before? Thinks I'm speaking gibberish. Okay. Um, so the, the important part is this one. It means the cosine of this angle, cosine theta, is equal to the um, adjacent over the hypotenuse. Right, so, eh. so this is the adjacent, this is the hypotenuse of a right triangle here, because it's a projection. And so in order to get this length here, then I want to solve for the adjacent, it's right next to here, um, this, this adjacent, so I move the hypotenuse to this side. But I don't need to because the hypotenuse was normalized to 1. Right? So this length is exactly the cosine of this thing, which was exactly the value of the dot product once I normalized. So the so is sine is opposite over hypotenuse, and toa is tangent is equals to opposite over adjacent. So it, it doesn't mean anything, but you just say it over and over again enough that you eventually can't ever forget it for, uh, for, uh, for better or worse. Um, okay, so th this is the cosine distance. Um, do, we, yeah, do we have two questions when you are talking about cosine similarity? Uh, those are equal actually. Uh, you can do that now, yeah? Uh, uh, these are the Euclidean norms, yeah. and, and you're right, this is cosine similarity, not the distance. This is. One minus this. The other thing is that uh, you said that actually L one is more stable than L two against the outliers. Yeah. Yeah. So it, why some sense we'll make formal on yeah, later? Yeah, I know. But why don't we use, for example, L one in this program? Or well, uh, so it's so I'm I just I'm seems reasonable that you use L one for this one. So it's 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 an interesting question. I'm I'm not sure what happens. The I'll, I'll explain some properties which you will lose if you do L1. Um, what you're going to lose is that this, is, this measures 1 minus the cosine of the angle between these. 
And in order to get this angle, you want to normalize these vectors. So the thing is here, you can define the, actually, the angle, you, you can define a new definition for angle. It's not such a big deal. Um, yeah, you could. So maybe this is an interesting variant of the distance. Um, so I'm, so I, I've, I've never seen that distance used, but there's no reason you could use it. Maybe it is a more stable version of the cosine distance. Um, that's an interesting question. I, I think it, it just kind of uh, emphasizes my point that your choice of distance is, you know, is somewhat arbitrary. It's a modeling choice. Um, you, you could, so if you, if you normalize them, then what would happen? The L1 is going, the, the, um, instead of this circle, you're going to get this, um, this, this diamond instead, right? And uh, so then the, these vectors are going to be a bit smaller, which means that this value will be a bit larger. And so I'm not sure that it's, This isn't in one here. This is supposed to be a uh, pi. Is that right? No, hold on. No, it was one. one. Yeah. You have pi in your notes. I pi in my notes? Okay, good. I'll have to change my notes. Um, so, okay, so if this is a bit larger, Maybe it's possible that this value could be larger than 1, and so then it wouldn't satisfy even the non-negativity property of the distance. Um, if you can come up with an example, I'd be, that, that'd be interesting. Um, so I guess if you made these smaller, if the, yeah, if you have two things which are exactly, um, if the angle between them was 0, and they're exactly on here, and you normalize them so that then the dot product of them, um, let's say they're both at distance two, they're both a vector of like two, so the dot product was then going to be four, right? And they're both on the exact 45 degree angle. The dot product will be four, you're normalized by something less than four, so this value will be greater than one, and you'll be have something that's negative. So it makes sense to use the L2 distance here. Um, I'm okay, so what, what, when, is, when, is the, when is the cosine distance useful? When would you, why would you use this instead of, say, the L2 distance? When you have two vectors, right? But I could say, I could use the L2 distance between these two vectors, right? This is a perfectly good distance between the vectors, right? Right, so, um, so good. So, so, uh, so, so when is the direction, so when is the direction more important than the magnitude? High dimensional. And uh, how come it high dimensional there? For example, in case. Text. So what is the what is the direction telling you about the text? If you if it's if, it, if it's the bag of words model, where you uh, it's the the vector is which words you have some component in each direction you have one of the words. So that's, pretty, um, so that's pretty close, so I'll, I'll try and re-explain what you're saying. So when you're thinking of high dimensions, 
we somehow did these tricks with the with the min hashing to get a vector representation for um, these these documents. And the way you can think about it is you're going to have these um, dimensions for each each of these 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 vectors a and b and ai you know um, b1 a2 b2 up to a d up to b okay so so what is the right way to think about what are each of these dimensions meaning basically this dimension is saying um, it's not the exact right way with with um, um, with, with the min hashing, but it's saying, do you have word, um, you know, two? Where two is maybe somewhere like pizza, right? So, so this is, it, is pizza in the document? Um, and, and so there's this, this model I talked about, not other than shingles, uh, 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 um, this uh, um, this model called the bag of words model, um, where it's 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 counting which words are in your document. Each is corresponding to an element in the vector, and instead of just zero or one, you have it. It says how many words you have. Okay, so then if you have two documents that are very similar, let's say one is. Um, um, you know, I um, rock. This is one document. The other document is says um, I rock. I um, rock. Right. You know, you're just repeating the same thing twice, right? So th these are going to have very similar vectors to each other, but this one's going to be twice as long because there are two times as many of the, you know, each word is repeated twice. So if you look at these as high dimensional vectors, then they're gonna be right on top of each other, but they're gonna be, um, but their, their distance is gonna be, their magnitude is gonna be different, right? So if I'm looking at these, these vectors in this way, then, um, then, and I just wanna say, what is the distribution of words in the document instead of the, the, the difference in the counts of the words? So the L2 distance between the vectors, what you would have is, so, so maybe this is D2, and then D1 is going to look like this. They're exactly the same direction, but, D, but D2 is twice as far. So then the, this is going to be the L2 distance, but the cosine distance is going to say that they're exactly the same. So their distance is zero. So they have the same, it says something about the distribution of words instead of the actual difference in the counts of words. Um, so, so two points. So one is that means it doesn't satisfy this property as identity. Right? These documents are not identical to each other, but they have the same distribution of words. So this, when I've normalized the, the documents here, I've gotten rid of the magnitude of the vectors. So two vectors with the same, with different magnitudes may end up being the same after I've normalized them. So, so that's why I don't have the identity property anymore. But that can be a good thing because then my distance is just talking about the distribution of the words, not kind of the, the number of words or something. So I just, it allows me to throw away information that I don't want to measure. So losing identity is not necessarily not necessarily a bad thing. Um, okay, so uh, the other thing is this picture, if it was from this example, is not quite right. Um, well, um, well, actually, it's probably, probably okay. So actually, the, the so. One thing to um, keep in mind when you get these high dimensional vectors is that they're going to be very, very sparse. A lot of the coordinates are going to be zero um, because you're missing, most words in the dictionary are not going to be represented by your vector. So it's going to be, you know, in this case, 
it would be like this where this was the x and the y axis, and this would be about be exactly 45 degrees between. Um, but if you looked at the z axis, um, so if this was the z axis, or according to some other coordinate, it's going to have zero component along here. So these things tend to lie in these axis aligned subspaces. So even though you're using the L2 distance, which you need to normalize and keep it so it's a it satisfies the non-negativity <coughs> property, the, the coordinates actually mean something. So you don't necessarily want it to be rotation invariant in all senses. It makes sense for angles, but that you don't want to throw away the coordinates, which is what a rotation invariance property, uh, why you want to preserve that for say L2 distance. Okay, so there's also a cool LSH trick for the cosine distance. And um, it's, it, it's actually really, it's, it's actually pretty simple. Um, what you do is you, um, you, you again pick a random um, um, vector. Um, you pick a random um, um, unit vector, and you and you project your your vector a onto this random unit vector. And if the magnitude is positive, you give it a value plus one. You give you put in a bin plus one. If it's negative, you put in a bin minus one. There are only two bins, so it, it, everything hashes either to plus one or minus one. And th this works as an LSH function. It's really simple. Every time there are only two bins, but if you do if you do um, enough of these and you use these tricks with the band, you can you can estimate the distance pretty well. Um, so there's a really easy LSH trick for this distance, for the cosine distance as well. And it, I, again, I just want to emphasize this pattern, which is we're repeating in the class, where you can do a bunch of really simple estimates and combine them together and get a much better estimate and get these distances. So this is kind of a, a very extreme example. You have just these two bands, the positive and the negative bands. And I described it a little bit more formally in, uh, in, in the notes. Um, I, I just want to mention very quickly two more distances before we uh, end, the, end the class. Um, the first one is um, um, the first distance is um, it's called it's called the added distance, and so th this has two main applications uh, where it's been really really heavily used as very important. One is in in text, and the other is in um, proteins. Where you have kind of uh, um, where you have the A, uh, these four different types of coordinate uh, yeah. uh, what? The DNA oh yeah, the thank you. Um, the DNA sequence, not the proteins. You have like twenty three different things you could have. Right? So the um, right, so it's very useful here to determine the distance between strings. And so the, the idea is this: that it's the it's the minimum. Um, Minimum, minimum number of, of edits to transform one to um, the other. Um, where an, an edit, um, so th this is actually a modeling choice, what you do the scores are, but it could be to um, to insert a um, letter and or to um, delete a letter. And so either either you can give different costs to both of these, or you can see they're the same cost, or you can do the, the uh, replace, which is um, is maybe is the same cost as one or the other of these, or slightly different. And so, kind of a simple example would be the um, the distance edit um, between this string 
minds and um, smile. Um, where what we're going to do is we're going to start with minds, and then we're going to re we're going to start by adding an s. Um, we're going to add an s at the beginning. This is one step. Um, we're going to take out the n. This is another step. We're going to add in an L. This is another step. And then we're going to take off the S of N. So it took one, two, three, four steps to get from lines to smile. Um, so th this distance right, is, um, this is also a, um, this distance is also a metric um, that it has to be non-negative. Um, it's zero only if they're the same. Um, it's symmetric because you can go backwards. Um, and it satisfies the triangle they call it. So it's, it's not too hard to show that. But you essentially, um, it's only equality if, you, if C is on the minimal path or a minimal path between them. Um, and so, so this is really useful. This is used like in, um, in if you're doing keyword search or if you're doing spelling correction when you're typing or in, in, in Google search engine. Um, and something like a distance three for edit distance is usually pretty large. So it's a discrete distance. It's only like zero, one, two, three, or things something bigger than three is big. So there's a very few number of values, but it, it's really, it's, it's a very powerful distance for that. Um, Okay, so, and then the, the final distance I just want to measure, mention, before I let you go, is the um, graph distance. <coughs> and so this is if you have a, a graph, which is a set of vertices and edges. So you have a set of, of vertices, this is V, and then the, the edges 